Hi everyone, my name is Dane Morey, along with Dr. Mike Rao and my colleagues Jesse Marcusi, Ryan Gifford, and Morgan Fitzgerald. We are systems researchers at The Ohio State University, and we are here to talk to you today about predicting the graceful extensibility of human-machine systems, a new analysis method. You know what? This title is way too long. What I'm really here to talk to you about is how tough is your system? At this point, if this was a live and in-person presentation, I'd set off some fireworks, blast some air horns, maybe a couple of those things that shoot flames behind me. It would have been incredibly dangerous, but I digress. The question remains, how tough is your system, specifically to deal with challenges both expected and unexpected? Does your system absorb a variety of challenges or perform very highly on some and not so well on others? As it is increasingly challenged, does your system's performance rapidly collapse or more gradually decline? With traditional usability tests, even if we were to test the system with a variety of scenarios, these are difficult questions to answer. We might be confident in our understanding of the system's performance in these scenarios, but how would we anticipate the system to perform outside of our testing set? And where might our system be particularly vulnerable? Now, if we were clever with the selection of our testing cases, perhaps we've selected or injected different classes of challenges. And so we can analyze performance across these classes of challenges. But, but still, how tough is this system? How would we anticipate the system to respond as it is increasingly challenged? Can we expect performance to hold up or collapse? And how fast do we expect this to happen? To answer these kind of questions, we need to shift the focus of our evaluation from analyzing performance at discrete system states to analyzing how performance changes in relation to increasing challenge. We need to analyze not just the level of performance, but the dynamics of performance and how we would expect performance to change. But before we do that, let's take a quick detour into the world of material science to talk about how they might use stress-strain curves to address similar questions. If we take material A and subject it to increasing stress, we'll first observe a linear region of elastic deformation, then a non-linear region of plastic deformation. Eventually, that sustained energy that's trying to tear apart this material system will result in a fracture, a total failure of the material which is obviously something we want to avoid as much as possible in our systems. Now, if we take another material, perhaps this material cannot withstand the same stress before entering plastic deformation, but it is able to extend this region much further before fracturing. So, which material would we prefer? If we want to avoid fractures, we might choose the material that is able to absorb the most destructive energy before fracturing. And in material science, this is defined as toughness, which we can calculate by integrating the area under the stress-strain curve. Based on toughness, we then characterize material A as strong but brittle, and material B as strong and ductile, or as we'll call it in systems, resilient. The key difference in these materials is seen only when we look at the plastic region that is stretching out right before a fracture. The shape of the curve, how rapidly a fracture develops, and how long the curve can be extended past the boundaries of its yield strength or what determine whether we consider a material to be brittle or resilient. So wait, why am I talking about material science? Because we want tough systems. We want systems that can absorb as much chaos and surprise as possible before collapsing. We want systems that can continue to perform even as they extend past their boundaries. We want systems that can deform, that can diverge their usual form or adapt when needed to compensate for increasing disturbances. And so we want ways to evaluate the dynamic character of performance and how performance either extends or collapses under increasing stress. The method we propose is an analysis focused on what we've been calling extensibility plots. We construct each plot as the relationship between performance along the y-axis and challenge to the system along the x-axis. We then select a testing set that includes a variety of points along the challenge dimension. After testing is complete, we can plot all the data points and take the average moving from case to case. From these data, we fit a sigmoid curve and use that curve as a model of performance as it relates to the challenge dimension. In this, we draw inspiration from Taylor Murphy's work showing that human-machine performance can be modeled by standard psychometric curves. From here, we hope to use these models of performance to better understand and evaluate how performance degrades as the system is increasingly challenged. 
This example curve we might characterize as brittle in the way Woods describes because of the way performance rapidly collapses as challenge increases. On the other hand, a flatter curve where performance more gradually declines, we might say shows signs of graceful extensibility, in the way it seems to extend performance past its boundaries. We've now piloted our extensibility plots method with data from one of our recent human machine performance studies. 30 practicing nurses were shown real de-identified patient data from nine cases using a data visualization, and we asked them to rate their concern on a scale of 1 to 10. This display also included a machine learning algorithm that simultaneously predicted the probability of the patient having an adverse health event. We then calculated performance for both the machine accuracy and nurse concern by comparing against whether or not the patient actually had an adverse health event. We considered the decreasing accuracy of the machine prediction to be increasing challenge to the system, which is consistent with other studies of human machine teams that observe negative performance effects when the machine presents an incorrect prediction. To construct the extensibility plot, we first draw a reference line to show how the accuracy of the machine prediction declines. This is how the machine would perform if it alone were completing the task. We then have two regions on the chart, the left where the machine prediction is correct, and the right where the machine prediction is incorrect. The green line shows the average performance of the human machine team for each case. Even from these data, we can see human machine performance seems to roughly follow the performance of the machine alone when the machine prediction is correct. But as the machine prediction begins to become incorrect, it appears that human machine performance diverges from the machine prediction and extends past those machine boundaries. And finally, here is the sigmoid curve fitted to the human machine performance data. We then propose the analysis of five features on the sigmoid curve to explore the evaluation of brittleness in the system. Each of these five features were chosen to be identifiable on any sigmoid curve with the hopes to be able to transfer this kind of analysis to other human machine systems. First, we operationalize extended performance to be the area under the sigmoid curve that is above our machine-only reference line. Therefore, our model of performance expects our human-machine team to perform overall an additional 22% better than the machine alone across the entire range of challenge. Then, operationalizing brittleness as the rapid drop-off in performance, we want to analyze the rate at which performance declines. We therefore find the point at which the slope of the curve is steepest, which occurs when the machine prediction is 22% accurate. And the slope of the line at this point is 1.21. This means that our model suggests that when performance is declining most steeply, that is, when the system performance is most characteristically brittle, we would expect that for every 1% decrease in machine prediction accuracy, for there to be a corresponding 1.21% decrease in the human machine performance. So, at its steepest, our model of performance is slightly steeper than the reference line. Finally, we also wanted to analyze how rapidly performance was degrading. And we operationalize this by finding the point at which the curve is most rapidly steepening, which occurs when the machine prediction is 49% accurate. The value of the second derivative at this point suggests that for every 1% decrease in the machine prediction accuracy, we should expect the slope of performance curve to be steepening by 2.2% for every 1% decrease. Without another human-machine system to which we can compare these analyses, it is obviously difficult to characterize the brittleness of the system at this time, but what kinds of things might we be able to learn from these five features? If we look at the slope of the curve when it's steepest, we find that it is slightly steeper than the reference line. Though we're likely encouraged by the ability of the system to extend performance past machine boundaries, we'd ideally like to see the system continue to widen the gap from machine-only performance as the machine becomes increasingly incorrect. This might suggest the system needs extra support when the machine prediction is incorrect. Further supporting this insight, the most rapid drop-off point occurs when the machine is 49% accurate, and otherwise, the point at which the curve is most rapidly steepening occurs immediately after the machine transitions from being slightly correct to slightly incorrect. Again, this suggests that this system is in most need of improvements to help the human-machine team discern when the machine prediction is incorrect. 
Because of these kinds of preliminary insights, we are optimistic that this kind of analysis may be particularly useful to direct attention to aspects of the system where changes are most needed and can make a significant impact. A few limitations worth noting. Firstly, this method is a work in progress, so different systems or different challenge dimensions may need a different focus of analysis than the five features we propose. Secondly, what you measure and how you measure it really matters for this kind of analysis. We actually gathered data for another metric of performance in this study, and the metrics were often well aligned, but not always. And since we are making inferences from a model fitted to data, this method requires an increased emphasis on the data we're collecting and how. Lastly, it's worth noting that challenge is not unidimensional. Rather, what makes a scenario challenging to a system could be a variety of factors. So to get a complete view of our system's brittleness, we will need to view performance across a variety of different dimensions. Where we want to continue with this method is to incorporate multiple complementary measures of performance, multiple challenge dimensions, and counterbalance testing sets to separate out the effects. Our goal is an evaluative method that views system performance from multiple perspectives so we can better understand and direct our attention to the types of challenges to which the system is particularly brittle. Thank you so much for your time. Questions, comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can scan the QR code and it will take you directly to my email address. Now, I'm running a little short on time, so I'm going to have to cut it off in three two, last chance, one. Thanks again for your time and looking forward to talking with you at the end of the session.